Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. So today we are taking a look at the, the Behringer Xenix 802 USB and connecting it to the iPad. Now I am going to put this mic, uh, the camera on the stand in a sec, so bear with me because there are a couple of key, key, key things here to get this to work. So you can probably see on the uh, iPad there that my microphone is picking up through channel one here that is a drum pattern running on channel two there is no headphones so let's see where my thing is there is no headphone it's plugged in so it's all been done via the usb at the back here you'll see that the usb cable comes out the back of the 802 obviously goes into the camera connection kit there where are we here and then into the iPad, of course. And then this microphone here, which is in channel one, the one you're listening to now. And then in channel three and four, I have um, the uh, laptop there just running uh, um, Synthmaster one, the VST version. So, <clears throat> yeah, you can see here that this is what's going out. Now, these here, these are absolutely key to getting this to work okay so this one if you look really closely there the one that says this top onto phones control room that has to be down and this one the one that says to main mix that has to be up otherwise this will not work and you'll it, it and it can get confusing and a bit strange okay so when you're monitoring through headphones when you start moving these things up and down quite weird things happen to your volume changes as well so when you want to do it you set it up like this your routing in cubase sys will be simply this uh stereo input a normal or mono doesn't matter if you're just recording a line guitar now i'm going to pop this back onto the stand right okay so what I've done as well, so that you can hear exactly what's going on, um, my headphone output, so that you'd have your headphones plugged in, obviously, because you'd be working at home or in your studio or whatever. But I've taken a headphone output, and this headphone output is not going to headphones, it's going directly into the Tascam recorder, so for the audio. Okay, so the audio is listening is recorded into a Tascam recorder for, the, for quality purposes. And then I'm monitoring the, all this with my headphones via the a headphone output on the actual task cam. so that's you're, you're getting to hear exactly what's going on otherwise it gets confusing because when i start to record things will drop out of the actual main mix out but you can still hear everything through the headphones so what you are hearing now is exactly what you will hear when you start to record okay so you set up a project in, in cubase or wherever you like and then you want to use your audio interface maybe for guitars, your, your your voiceover like it is now, or your your keys. Now the keyboard settings, obviously because this is all going into just the first channel here, okay? I, when I play the keyboard here, you'll hear that as well, and you'll see it, um, you'll see it, what's it, monitor on the, on the uh, level meter there. And when I press play, I'll also hear my drums. So all I need to do to record something over that now, I'll just set that oh, it's set to loop. I'll just um, press record. So now that you you've heard that that's how that's how you record. So let's set up another one. Hear that drop out? So you'll get no volume there, right? So let's just don't worry about that. Let's set up add audio and well let's route this second audio track to uh well let's let's leave it on mono actually. Let's deselect this. And uh, let's select that for recording. Okay, so now you'll hear that I'm back again. And all my tracks are recorded. So let's go to our mixer now and just check our levels. Now this is where you can set your levels for your... If I turn up... 
and bring it back up slowly and slowly, slow, slow until we're happy with the level. Then I could there do a voiceover. And so let's lower the volume of that, lower the volume of that. And let's just there uh, do this. Let's go back there, hit our metronome. So this is just a quick look at the uh, Behringer Xenix Q802 USB. Okay, so now I have recorded my voice in mono, so you can choose mono or stereo, obviously, I guitars or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So <clears throat> what we can do now is play it back. Now, if I deselect this now, you will lose all my uh, audio from the microphone and we can just play the track back. So this is just a quick look at the uh, Behringer Xenix Q802 USB. Okay, so let's get some monitoring back there. So the thing is, right? If I, here's where you get, you can get, you can get, get cool beans. If I take this out, you will hear nothing if I'm talking. However. It gets very loud if I drop this one back up. So I would have to take my levels back down. So it was sensible. You see, this is what you've got to be careful of, okay? When you're monitoring things like this, if I press this plane, I'm not even sure what will happen. Nothing at all until I press um, this one down. O2 USB. You won't hear anything unless I'm monitoring through this as well. If this is down. Okay, so these, these are things that you remember, but as soon as I want to drop that back up, I'm back in business. And I don't need to worry about this at all until I set up another track. So this is purely for you. To, I'm, I'm just talking to you now. Okay, so the 802 is very, very good. It has eight inputs, yes? So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you've got, you can use the, uh, I don't know, we can use these two sends here as a, as a, uh, as, an, as another stereo input, and you can control the volume with them there. Then you have some, um, you know, the RCA ones or the Phono ones. The actual EQing is very good. Now, there are no, no effects on this, but you don't really need them, right? Because you're going to go into this. It's an entry-level mixer. It's a budget price. It's very, very... I, I like... Um, I use Behringer. I've got three Behringer mixers. One's really old and pretty ancient now and a bit tatty. don't really use that at all. Now it's a bit dusty, you know. And uh, I, for my main work all the time, I use the QX1204 USB. And, um, yeah, but the, listen, I mean, this nice, got nice EQs on it. Very cool. Very cool. You know, um, it plays, it plays nice. Oh, yeah, that's going to say, you see, this also happens when you're direct monitoring and not monitoring to record. Everything gets louder. But like I said, the EQing is very nice you have some gain control here so on the uh, microphone you know you can adjust the gain you can adjust the gain all you like until you start to clip you can go left and right i might have to actually i might have the things the wrong way around left and right. <laughs> probably have doesn't matter um you have effects um you have your effects sense here that you can set up here and plug a, 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 a an effects unit in obviously um has a compressor but you wouldn't really unless you were singing really loud i wouldn't even bother messing around with the compressor it has phantom power because this microphone is a really ancient uh behringer another behringer uh c1 microphone it still sounds okay it has phantom power here um you don't want to be going above zero on this really you know if you start to start to get too loud or you start to run you'll get a clip here but yeah, that's that's what you want to be watching out for as well. Things like uh, anything going above zero, you don't want that. Drop it back down a little bit. Other than that, you can fix it and normalise in your door later. You know, do the do the normalise do the normalise thing. It's, it it works. Or put some noise gates on it. Bruce Free is good, right? Uh, so basically, that's it, guys. Um, a couple of things I do not like about this mixer. Okay, so we get to the cons now. So you've you know, pros and cons. The thing wobbles. It wobbles. It just wobbles, and and it's not just me because other people have moaned as well. And it wobbles because they haven't bothered to let me move that out of the way. They haven't bothered to put any kind of um, rubber feet on it or anything. It's easily fixed, of course, if you just 
the tin over here like this and of course you don't want to be putting it on any sort of wobbly surface because you've got a vent there but you know the most important tool in any studio is blue tack blue tack is the most important thing you can ever buy buy blue tack it will fix everything everything you ever need fixing look at this look i even if this is tacked down with blue tack and you can turn it around and it will be um you know considerably more <laughs> stable than it was and it won't move around another thing is the fact that there's only two things really other than that this is a fabulous mixer the other thing is there is no on off switch okay which is mind-bogglingly strange and also mind-bogglingly annoying as well because i want to be able to go ching just switch it off oh, sorry about that just switch it off and that's my cable just switch it off and leave it and then come back and switch it back in. But no, no, no. If I want to unplug it, I've got to either unplug it here uh, or to, from the power supply or unplug it at the plug. So what I did is I actually went and got a, a plug board with a, <clears throat> a switch on it. And uh, now I've, because I use this, this, I don't actually use this to, for music at the moment. I use this to play my records and CDs and stuff downstairs. So this is actually the plugs into my studio monitors, which are also downstairs. Because the sounds nice, you know, and it's easy to easy to use. But that's what I use it for. But the big the big one here. The, I can to get this camera off again for you guys. Okay, the big one I use um, all the time is this one, and that's that's a really good mixer. That's got loads of effects on and stuff like that. It's nothing plugged into it at the moment because I'm doing it all through this. And that's the little, um, that's my little task cam that the uh, actual audio for this one, one, two is being recorded into. And then we'll take the SD card out of that and it'll go into um, the computer for a final mon 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 monitoring. So, so that's it. Yeah. So there you go. There is the, um, the what's it? The. The Behringer 8, oh, I'm light. The Behringer 802 effects. Uh, no, the Behringer 802 USB Xenix USB, and it has the same Xenix preamps that the uh, the big ones have as well. So the uh, the actual microphone, which you're, this is, it's got been processed through that now. All the audio has gone through the the 802. It's actually, <laughs> I see you, I see you there. I see. Uh, all the audio has obviously now gone through the uh, uh, 802. So yeah, so it's very good. I and it's cheap, you know, it was really, really cheap. It's about fifty quid. Which is great because my bigger mixer that I was using, I don't know if you can see that thing that now actually. You may be able to just about see it, but it may be a bit dark down there. That thing down there, there it is. That's pretty much given up its uh it's it needs it keeps dropping out one channel. So it, I probably need to take it to take the top off it, and I don't really want to do that. You know what I mean? It's ancient. I've had it about twelve years. Twelve, good, at least ten or eleven years, at least. Anyway, guys, listen, brilliant. I, 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 I would recommend if you want a decent, a decent price, good value, good quality, because they are. I like I said, I, I, I like uh, the Behringer stuff. It's, it's always been pretty reliable for me, uh, and it's. You know it's reasonably priced you know we can't go and afford to buy mackies and stuff like that the big yammies and things and it's too expensive and uh not co not cost effective <laughs> unfortunately but uh i like them i think they're good i think it's an it's a, i think it's an all right mixer i do especially for entry level and especially for just doing your basic kind of um Audio interface stuff, of course. It, of course. Also, don't forget as well. It will work with uh, your your PC. You know, just plug it into your PC. But you know, since most of what we do here is uh, iPad stuff. Anyway, I may do another one with some guitars just to give give some tone stuff. Or I'll try and get me mates um, effects rack sometime and plug that in. Uh, so you yeah, had to set all that up. But mixes are pretty pretty straightforward when you get your head round how they work. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel or even consider becoming a patron and help support the sound test room so we can carry on making videos. Um, yep. Okay. See you guys later. Thanks.